Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God, I need you. I need you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on back in, everybody. <laughs> Come on back in. Come on back in. Come on back in. Come on back in. Come on back in, precious. Glory to God. Y'all keep praying. Hallelujah. I'm talking to them. Amen. Come on back in. Woo. This is going to happen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's right. Come on back in. Hallelujah. Come on back in, everybody. Hallelujah. I know. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God, yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. Oh, God, we love you today. Oh, God, we bless you today. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, you are worthy of the praise, the glory, and the honor. Hallelujah. We bless you this morning, God. My God, we give you the praise, oh God. We thank you, Lord God. Because we're on point, oh God. Because we're on time, oh God. My God, I thank you, Lord God, that the most the people are joining all of around the world uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Father God, uh, we thank you, Lord God. Uh, we cry out to you this morning, oh God. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by the work and power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, Father, we ask you now, Lord God, uh, my God, to forgive us of all our sins. Uh, blot out our transgression. Uh, remove iniquity from our life, oh God. Uh, wash us and purge us and purify us. So sanctify us unto you, Lord God. We need you today, oh God. Go down on the inside of us, oh God. And uproot and gut out every foul and corrupt spirit, oh God. That is not of you. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. God, we praise you. God, we glorify you. God, we magnify you. God, we adore you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, God, yes, God, yes, God, yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. Yes, God. We thank you, Lord God. My God, but there is no God like you. I might see there's no God like you in all the earth, oh God. There's no God like you in the heavens, oh God. There's no God like you. I see under the earth, oh God. There was no God before you, and there be no God after you. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we come in agreement today, oh God. All around the world, oh God. Oh God, we touch and agree. We come in unity. We come in oneness. We come in one. My God, we seek you, God. We seek your face, God. In the name of Jesus, creating us a clean heart and renew the right spirit within us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for the spirit of consecration today, oh God. We thank you, Father God, that you've chosen us, oh God. We thank you that your grace is sufficient, that you have graced us to join in all around the world. We thank you, Lord God, that you have graced us to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying, oh God. We thank you for the seven days of consecration. We thank you, Lord God, for in you we live, we move, and we have our being. We thank you, Lord God. My God, all things are ready, oh God. You have purpose and you have planned it, oh God. And no one can turn your hand, oh God. My God, you change not. And we thank you today, Lord God. We thank you for keeping us and watching over us, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for performing your good work towards us. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we apply the blood from the crown of our heads up to the sole of our feet up we apply the blood now god up over the airways oh god up we apply the blood now god up oh god over every ear gate up in the name of jesus up oh god oh god the blood up the blood of the mercy over every heart and every mind every spirit and every soul up oh god we apply the blood now god up to the works of our hands oh god up in the name of jesus up oh god we thank you lord up for the steps of a good man is ordered by you lord god up in the name of jesus Oh God, I thank you. Yes, God, I do 
Yes, God, yes, Lord, yes, God, we thank you. And we praise you. Yes, God, yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Oh, God. Yes, I come. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, we thank you. For the day is the day that you have made. And we love you today, God. And we praise you today, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God. Touch every mind, every spirit, every soul, every heart today, God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you today, Lord God. My God, for the spirit of consecration. My God, let our minds be consecrated. Let our hearts be consecrated. Let our thoughts be consecrated unto you, Lord God. Let our health be consecrated. Let our finances be consecrated. Let our marriages be consecrated. Let our business be consecrated unto you, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, my God, we seek you early, Lord God. And you said if we seek you, we'll find you. And so, Father, we thank you today, Lord God, because you're the God of our salvation. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. We yield ourselves to you this day, Holy Spirit. Move by your spirit. In the name of Jesus, we yield ourselves. My God, we thank you, Lord, that you have chosen us, God, that you've chosen our family, God, for the spirit of consecration. We thank you, Lord God, that your hand is upon our lives. Life, uh, that you've overshadowed us with your presence, uh, that your glory is being revealed uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, we thank you that your purpose uh, is being done now, God, uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, and I pray for every family, God. Uh, my God from Zion, I thank you uh, that every family that is presentable, say, uh, that is represented on in the most, say, uh, on Facebook Live, I pray now, God, uh, you know their probable see, uh, their situation. Uh, you know, God, all things, uh, but you are the answer, God. Uh, you are our help, God. You are our strong tower, God. We lean to you, God. We don't lean to our own understanding. We lean to you, God. Lord, have your way. My God, take the scales off our eyes that we may see in the realm of the spirit. Bring clarity, insight, and understanding today, God, as we join together, as we encourage one another, as we strengthen one another in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, we thank you for your word because your word is true. Everything going down but your word. My God, speak today, God. We thank you for the oil of the anointing. It destroys the yoke and lifts every burden. And we thank you that it's being done now, God. Yes, Lord, we pray for every leader. My God, that's coming on, God. We pray strength, God. We pray the spirit of consecration. Oh, God, to the Mosiah, that will take over their churches, over the Mosiah, over their minds, oh, God. We thank you for them now, God. Cover them, keep them, protect them, help them. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for every child, God. Shanda, cover them, protect them, and keep them in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. It's not about us, God. It's about you, Lord. And we hunger and we thirst at the righteous. And you said we shall be filled. My God, we yearn for you. My God, we thirst for you. Our eyes are upon you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray no weapon formed against us this day will be able to prosper. My God, we thank you for the spirit of praise, the spirit of joy, the spirit of happiness. Happiness. And it is so, God. We call it into existence. Oh, God, the word of God is being performed now. Miracle signs and wonders are being performed now because of the spirit of consecration. Our minds are consecrated. Our hearts are consecrated. Our lives are consecrated. In you, Lord God. My God, all things are ready. In the name of Jesus. And it is so. Somebody clap your hands and say, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. My God. Yes, 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 thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, thank you, Lord. Yes, God. We thank you for the spirit of consecration. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Come on and tell the Lord, thank you. Ooh, God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, I praise you. God, I glorify you. God, I bless you. I adore you. God, I thank you. Because it is so. Because it is so. Because it is so. Somebody say it is so. Somebody say it is so. Somebody say it is so. Now, say. Yes, God, it is so. Yes, God, the spirit of consecration. 
in the name of Jesus. Come on, clap your hands, grab your Bibles. Amen. Yes, God. Ooh. I feel the presence of the Lord. God, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just lift your hands for a few seconds and close your eyes. Amen. Oh, God, I thank you. Come on, just tell the Lord you love him right there. Come on, just tell the Lord you love him. Open your mouth, everybody in here, everybody on there. Amen. Wherever you at, if you're driving, amen, you can't lift your hands. Amen. But if you're in a place, you can lift your hands. Lift your hands and tell the Lord you love him. Tell the Lord you love him. Tell the Lord you love him. Glory to God. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. I thank you, and I love you, Lord. Ooh. Because you are all we need. You are all we need. I thank you. Lift both of your hands. Thank you, Lord. 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 Do it in me, God. Do it in us, God. Lord, don't forget about us. Have mercy on us. Whatever you're doing in this season, whatever you're doing in this hour, God, don't forget about us. Oh, God, do it with us, oh, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, somebody clap your hands. Come on. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. We thank God for you, 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 and you. Amen. We thank God. Amen. My family is consecrated. Amen. This is amen. This is a time that we need to hear God. Amen. And we need to obey God and we need to do what He tells us to do. Glory to God. Because you have to realize, I have first stated it on yesterday. You have came from January to August. Glory to God. And yes, the enemy has tried you, and the enemy has tried to deter you. The enemy even had tried to stop you, but you kept going. And you have made it from January to August. And yes, even in the midst of those times, God had blessed you. God moved for you. God has done great things for you. Miracles took place. Well, we need to realize from August to December, God has something great that he's about to do for all of us. All around the world, those that have been faithful to God, those that have been obeying God, you have to understand God will reward the faithful ones. God will reward those that have been obedient and I truly believe that God is about to do something in our lives like never before in these last months glory to God hallelujah these last months uh-huh yes Lord these last months of 2017 but I don't want to miss what God has purpose and yes. plan yes. it's all about God when you consecrate precious it's about God it's about you and me making sure glory to God that we stay in his presence presence. Consecration will make sure of that. Consecration will make sure that you have an ear to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church, which is you. And if you and I will stay close to God, God will stay close to us. Yes. For the Bible says it like this. He will draw us to him. If God is drawing us closer, then we need to come closer. Consecration is an awesome time and an awesome season. And we have to begin to say not just yes, Lord, but yes, Lord, and do it. And yes. so this is seven days of consecration. And the Lord said, daughter, I want you to invite, amen, all those around the world. But I want want them to acknowledge me, yes. said the Lord, yes. if I have chosen them for this time. It doesn't mean that I'm better than anybody because I'm not. But what it means is we have to learn glory to God. Though all people are doing things for God, we need to make sure it is in our timing yes. that God has set forth for us to do something. Yes. It's good to consecrate. It's good to fast. But my God from Zion, we have to make sure it is the timing of God. Because 
because you can fast and you can consecrate and God never told you to do it. So now. you've done it, but you won't get any results. We have to be, glory to God, in the obedience alignment of God. And so God said, I want you to open it up to everyone around the world, but tell them they have to acknowledge me. Oh, that was now. good right there. But tell them they have to acknowledge me, yes. and then I will let them know, glory to God, that they're to come on and to join in with this seven-day consecration. Yes. Is anybody listening or did everybody listening. go home? Because so many times, look back over your life. How many times you have joined people and joined, amen, not that they weren't anointed, they was anointed, the power of God was with them, the fire of God was with them, but guess what? Did nothing happen for you. Come on now. You come were on. in the midst. You were there, you hollered back, you oh high five, you did everything. Yes. It wasn't that they was not anointed. It was not that they was on fire. You was out of place. You, you wasn't in your timing. Timing is everything. That's why a lot of us, we get led astray with every wind and doctrine. Sometimes the doctrine, watch God, sometimes the doctrine is not a wrong doctrine. Sometimes the doctrine is the doctrine of the Lord. But what we fail to realize is it the timing. Yes. The Bible said in the fullness of time, God sent Jesus. On, so man. until we get that, we need to understand the sons of Issachar, they knew the timing of what to do and how to do it. That's what the body of Christ is missing. We're missing the timing. We either before God or we lagging behind. But when you're in the timing of God, you're with God. Is anybody listening? Did oh, everybody yes. go home? Oh, and yes. so I thank God for you, 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 and you. You must have got the green light to come on and join in the consecration. Is anybody listening? Did everybody oh, yes, go home? Amen. Understand this. This is day two of the consecration. Yes. I've already got, amen, praise reports already coming in regarding day one of the consecration. Oh Glory to God. And when I was getting it, I was just started crying and I just started yes. shouting yes. because yes. God means business with us. Yes. And when God means business with us, we got to get down to business. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, it's time to get down to business. Time to get down to business. Because God means business with our life. Yes. And so this is day two of the consecration. Yes. And everybody knows about 8 o'clock every Amen. Uh, days of this consecration. We're joining in together to link together because we are family. We are unified. We have love for one another. Come on, somebody. Yes. Glory to God. And we want to link and come in. Amen. And encourage one another and support one another and let you know you can walk through this and you can do it. Tell your neighbor you can do it. You can do it. I said, tell your neighbor you can do it. You can do it. Tell your neighbor you can do it. No, you can do it. Tell your neighbor you can do it. You can, you can do, do it. it. My God from Zion, hallelujah, up, Oshia. You can do it. And that's what we're doing these uh, uh, seven days. Amen. Now we're in the six days. Amen. And so this is what we're doing at 8 o'clock every morning, doing this consecration time and season and hour of our life. We're coming and we're joining in. Amen. Because we're family. Family. All around the world. Do you not know the kingdom of God is enlarging itself right now? Come on now. Oh my God. God is a good God. Amen. So you and I need to realize, amen, that God is speaking to us. He's speaking to our spirit and he's getting ready to do something in our lives. If you believe that, somebody clap your hands and say yes. Yes. So like I first stated, like I first stated, I hear you, Holy Ghost. I hear the Holy Ghost. So he talking to me about my house, and when I get off, I'm finna, I'm finna correct some people. Amen. Because we can't take God for granted. Amen. Yeah. All that you see God is doing, you think it's because of you. Yeah. No, it's because of God. And when God calls the people in to come in to him, you need to be grateful, and you need to be honored, and you need yeah. to be happy, and quit acting like it's all about you. It ain't yeah. about you. It's about God and God keeping you. Come it's about now. God and God, amen, moving in your life. Amen. So when God called you personally, glory to God, to come into his chambers. Yes. That's some good stuff right there. When he calls you to come into his chambers, come you ought to be now. happy. Because can't no watch this, can't nobody save you from death. Come on now. Can't nobody save you from an accident. You right. Can't nobody save you but God. You right, mother. Come on here. Your shoes can't save you. 
Your hairpiece can't save you. Your house can't save you. Buckle your seatbelt right here. Your job and your marriage can't save you. It's only one that can save you. And when God calls, amen, a time out, amen, of doing all your busy work and all this other stuff and call you for in a time to be with him, you ought to be grateful because there are some people God ain't calling no more. Oh. I needed a greeter right there. I said, there's some people God is not calling into his chambers no more. And so we in here, as well as on here, we need to be grateful. You ain't all that cute. You ain't all that. You better thank God he's calling you in. He's calling you in as a joint family. He's calling you as a, a glory to God, a body. Sometimes we get it, we get it, we get it, we get it twisted. Don't you know you can have money today and God will wipe it out? Don't you know you can have your help today and God will allow it to be wiped out? Come on. When he calls you in to his chambers, yes. when he calls you into his presence, you, yes, Lord, I heard you. He just said, tell them they ought to be geeked. Now, on, say, you better come on now. You ought to be geeked. You ought to be happy. You ought to be doing backflips and you know you can't do them no more. Come on here. You ought to do a cartwheel and know you can't do it no more. In other words, you're so happy that you'll try to do a backflip. You're so happy you'll try to do a cartwheel. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Why? Because the Lord, our God, Abba Shaya, amen, called us into his chamber Come on now. to draw closer. And we are letting ourselves and the enemy mess with us doing consecration. Come on and now. you think you're going to get something allowing the enemy to use you Ooh. in such a time as this? Jesus. You got an attitude. You getting mad. You getting upset real quick. Come on. Consecration. That's how you know you need it. Come on now. Because you got to get separated from all this stuff. Jesus, thank you you got to get separated. Nobody going to get nobody no pacifiers. Ain't nobody going to give you no pamper. Ain't nobody going to pat you on your back. Come on. Grow up. Mature. Yes. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Come on now, Mother. I'm going to tell some people heads up right now. You better get in if you ask, ask yourself this is you. Glory to God. I'm getting ready to start cutting some folks off. Because I can't get with no roller co coaster ride. Because yes, yes. I don't even ride them myself, naturally. So surely, spiritually, I'm not doing it. So you better ask yourself. Because some folks is about to be cut off. Come on, mother. And I ain't got to worry about moving nobody. Because when I cut you off, God going to move you. Come on, because I ain't got time for this roller coaster up and down your flesh and your, oh, you hurting me, oh, me, oh. I ain't got time for that. It's too much. Yes. That's, that's why we need the consecration. I said, that's why we need the consecration. Your neighbor, that's why I need the consecration. Because I'm up and down. I'm not dead. I'm not dead to my flesh. Every time somebody say something to me, and if it don't feel good, here I go with an attitude. Come on, my whole character, everything about me changed. Just the second day. You know you need consecration. Yes, I do. You ain't even long suffering. You don't even have no patience. You need consecration. When God calls you into his chamber, you ought to be happy. You ought to love God. You ought to thank him. Hey, no call. Yeah, my not, sire. Yes, Holy Ghost, I hear you. He told me to tell you, learn yourself. Yes. Because when you learn yourself and you see yourself coming out of pocket, then you need to correct yourself so God don't have to send nobody else to correct on, you. Man. That's the problem. You don't know yourself, and God got to send people to correct you. Then you get mad because you already know you had an attitude. Come on now. You can't get in the presence of somebody that's in the presence of God with a funky attitude. You can't get in a, a man in the presence of God or the presence of God on somebody's life and you got problems and you trying to hide it. The Holy Ghost, the light, Jesus Christ is the light. And when we got problems, that's darkness. So the light will shine in the midst of darkness. Come on now. You're not hiding. You just getting yourself in trouble. Hallelujah. So this consecration is the second day. Day. Amen. We want everything. Give me this. Can I have this? Google, would you do this? Would you do that? And don't want God? I got a problem with that. And don't want God? I ain't talking about no sinner. A sinner don't even know God until he start dealing with him. No man can come to God except he draw them. That's it. Are you hearing me? Yes. God is a God. Do you not know? I'm, si I'm sitting here today teaching you, but I'm not supposed to be here. Come Do you know on, how many times death knocked at my door? Y'all y'all be tripping me out. You act like you the one giving yourself breath. You act like you the giving yourself, amen, health and strength. It's God. Precious, I'm not supposed to be sitting here. My two boys that's here on the earth, they ain't supposed to be here. Hello. These latter two, they ain't supposed to be here. You better realize who God is in your life. And when he called you to the chamber, amen, you need to be happy. Amen. You need to be glad. You need to get excited and tell your flesh, go somewhere and sit down. Yes, go sit down somewhere. So this is the second day. 
Glory to God. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 6 through 8, because this is the second day, amen, I got a little time with you, amen, to encourage you. Genesis chapter 2, you know creation on the second day. What happened on the second day? I need you to hear what I'm saying, amen. Genesis chapter 2, uh, 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 I'm sorry, Genesis, glory to God, chapter 1 and verse 6. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 6 says, and God said, let there be firmament. In the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. Let it divide. The word is divide. Let yes. it divide. Divide. If, if you got your Bible, amen, if you got it in front of you and you're not scared to uh, mess it up, amen, circle that word divide. It says, and let it divide waters from waters. And God made the firmament, the sky, and divided the waters which were under the firmament. The firmament is the sky. It was water, it's water under the firmament, and it's water above the firmament. Now watch this. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Were the second day. So this is the second day of consecration. Are you hearing me? So, so, so if the second day of consecration was, amen, that God uh, made the water and the sky, are you hearing me? Yeah. Then he did what? He separated it because division is to separate. That's it. But division is, uh, is not always a bad word, though we know it to be because when division is happening, sometimes discord is showing up. But sometimes division is not a bad thing. You just have to understand what is it being used for? What is it, uh, uh, what, uh, what, what, what part of the, yes, Lord, the conversation is it being used for? Then you can understand which way he's talking about division. Because here in chapter 1, verse 6 through 8, it is not a bad thing about division. Right. He separated. So two is a separation. So the second day is a separation. It's not a bad separation because you and I were, some, were supposed to already separate because we're now in the presence of God. So being separated is not the negative separation. I'm going to give you some clarity. I'm going to give you some understanding. I had to take you to the scripture that when God came, came into day two, what happened? Yes, he, watch this, he, 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 he made the firmament, which was the sky, and he separated the water. He put the water above and the water beneath the firmament, which is the sky. He took what was one and separated or took what was one and divided. God, I love you right there. Hada Boshaya. Because the only thing we think about is multiplicity, multiplying. And God said division is not a bad thing because he took the two and he divided it. He took the one, which was the whole, and then he separated it. Are you hearing me? Yeah. So this is day two. You, Watch this. It conveys the meaning of union and partnership, which means you're not going to be by yourself, Hello. which means you got to have help. Yes. <laughs> day two. <laughs> Glory to God means balance. God getting ready to balance us out. He's getting ready to cause what was unbalanced to be balanced. Is anybody listening to everybody go home? Day two or number two, it means verification of facts by a witness of truth. That means day two, glory to God, of the consecration is dealing with us to be witnesses of the truth. Okay. And not just the truth of the word of God. It's time to tell the truth at all times. Yes, mother. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Because we choose to tell the truth and when we want to tell the truth. But as long as we talk in the word, we'll tell the truth. But when we shut our Bibles, then we choose to, of what we're going to tell the truth. Come on, but man. number two, uh, 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 the semi-symbolic of number two is a witness mm -hmm. of truth, which means, baby, if you don't want me to tell the truth, then don't do it around me. If you don't want me to tell the truth, then don't say it around me. Not that I'm going to go run and gossip. Right. Come on. But the truth, in other words, don't do it if you don't want me to say nothing. Right. Because I'm going to say something to you. Yes. That you're wrong. Yes. That you're out of pocket. Yes. So the uh, number two symbolic is, God, I thank you. Yes. It's yes. the witness of truth. Not just the word of God.
So a lot of us are getting in trouble because when we shut the Bible, we go and do a lot of stuff that we know we're not supposed to do. But then we want to quote scriptures, amen, glory to God, to help us to get out. I know there's now no condemnation to those, glory to God, that's in Christ Jesus, but baby, you need to stop all this foolishness because the Bible says, "Uh uh-huh, count it all joy when you fall, not when you purpose to fall. Count it all joy when you fall. You weren't trying to fall into temptation. But those that purpose, come on, you try to use that scripture for your benefit. No, that can't happen. So, so, so the number two symbolic glory to God is a verification facts by witness of truth of a matter. Watch this. Without the number two, watch this. Without the number two or without the second day or without the number two, glory to God, positive and negative cannot exist. Oh. Come on, mother. Positive and negative cannot exist. Why? Don't shoot me down. Because when you go back to Genesis 1, what did it say? You had the firmament and then you had the water. But then God came in and he separated the waters. Mm -hmm. He divided the waters. Okay, I'm I'm, going to slap you real good. Because that's that's the water the Holy Ghost. All right. He made light. Mm -hmm. Mm L-I-G-H-T. Right? Then he he separates light. Mm -hmm. So therefore there's a a, a brighter light and then there's a lesser light. Mm -hmm. The lesser light is called dark. Right. Come on, Shonda. The brighter light is when it's light and you can see it's day. Are you hearing me? So therefore, there could be no positive and negative if there is no number two. Right. Okay. <laughs> Are you hearing me? It yes. won't exist. Yes. So in other words, God calls it to exist. And it's a reason why he calls the second day to exist. Come on. Come on. Let there be water. And let the water divide and go one go above the sky, which is the firmament. And the other one go below the firmament. Which means if you look at your house or look at your window of your job or look at your window of your car, above you is the sky, but above that is water. If you look at the ground, the ground is below you, but it's water up under it. Which means, baby, God don't need to use no ocean to flood nobody. That's why I said, Lord God, he wasn't going to allow the world to flood anymore. He started from the heavens <laughs> to flood everything. We got water above us and we got water below us. He took what was one and he divided it. Tell your neighbor, this is a good division right this here. This is a good division right so here. So the second day of consecration, God said, I'm going to take it. Everybody knows so. Where somebody else will have to take that one thing. Watch this. And then they have to use it, and then that's it. But for you, I'm going to divide it, and it's going to work in your favor. Number one, the day number one is the essence of God. Yes. But number two is the existence of God. Did you hear that? Yes. The existence of God. Number one is uh, the essence of God. Number two. It's the existence of God. This is all about consecration. We're consecrating ourselves unto God, unto him. Are you hearing me? We already removed some things, and then when God revealed you got some stuff in you that needs to be removed, then you need to remove that. But this number two, the second day, God said, I'm going to bring balance to your life. The second day, I'm going to cause you to be a true witness, not just of the word of God, but of your life, period. And you're not going to allow people to come in your life that are liars. That's it. Come, come on, on now. Come on, mother. You're not going to just accept it. I'm not talking about they walking past blessing. I'm talking about people that's around you. That's it. That's it. We understand the word consecration. Consecration, of course, I told you, it means to be what? Set apart. It means to sanctify. It means perfection. So when we are coming into consecration with the Lord, he's going to perfect that. Which concerns us. Come on now. Are you hearing me? Right and right not right. perfect your money. That's, That's what's concerning you. Because your money can't flow the way you want it to flow if you and I is all lopsided. Come on. Right. We have to be be with God and our eyes on God. Yes. And God will do the rest. So consecration is perfection. Consecration means excellence. 
Is anybody listening? Did everybody go home? Consecration again means giving yourself to God. In the word Hebrew, it means to be hollow. When I saw that word, to be hollowed, it took me back to the scripture where Jacob was wrestling with the angel of the Lord. Right. And when the day was breaking, the angel of the Lord told a man Jacob to let him go. Jacob said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Buckle your seatbelts right here. He, Jacob said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Right. All right. Uh -huh. Go ahead, brother. Before the angel told him that things have changed, he had to consecrate him. So when it said he he hit him in the thigh, it came hollow. Uh -huh. That means he had to be consecrated to get it. Though you wrestle with the word, my God from Zion. Though you wrestle with God with faith, with it. When it's time for you to get it, consecration has to come up in your spirit. Is anybody listening? Because consecration means hollow. And when the angel of the Lord hit Jacob in the thigh, it said, and it hollowed, that means he was consecrated. So now then he turns around and says to Jacob, your name has been changed. Ho, oh, glory to God. You are no longer no supplanter. You're not a thief. You're not a robber. You won't lie because I have consecrated you unto me, said the Lord. Oh, God. Woo! Woo! My God! Woo! Y'all need about five greeters right there. I'm trying to tell you when he told me that one right there. I said, "You telling the truth? Come on, Jesus, and talk to us, sister. Glory to God! Do you not know that every time you when you give it coming to something that is going to be used? Watch this, used for the service of God. He got a you got to go through a consecration. Wow! You got to be hollow. Ooh, keep me on the Ooh, that's some good stuff that's to a good. sister. Yes, and of course, holy. we know consecration means what? Be holy. Ooh. Be holy, said the Lord, because what? He, he is, is holy. holy. Amen. Did y'all get that? Oh, yeah. Did you feel that in your knowing? I, I, I needed three greeters right there when he revealed that to me. He said, Jacob was consecrated. He didn't just, amen, watch this. He didn't just wrestle with me for that word, mm -hmm. and then it just showed up. Right. No, he had to come from amongst them. I'm going to say something to hurt your sight. Come from amongst them. The amongst all these spirits that you be operating in. Yes, it's people too. But first of all, it got to be you coming from amongst these spirits right. that had taken over your life. Right. When you were in the world, come oh, out from among come them. On, come and on. be ye separated yes. unto the Lord, said the Lord. Yes, Lord. We want to come from among people right. when we still got all these evil spirits. Right. All these demonic spirits. All these works of the flesh. He said, come out from among them. Yes. And be ye separated. Yes, and yes. then because now the consecration time, the consecration uh, um, uh, uh, anointing is there because now you've been separated unto God. Oh, God. That's why ain't nothing changed because you keep coming out from among people. Yeah. But all that yeah. stuff, all that junk, all that mess that you used to carry in the world, you ain't come, you ain't come out from among that. Anybody listening? Yes. Yeah, come out from among them. We just got one person. Part of it. God, amen, for the deeper revelation of it. Girl, boy, you better come out from among them people. Well, you then you come out from among everybody you want to. But why are you still acting the way you was acting when you was in the world? Because you ain't came out from amongst them spirits that is not of God. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Glory to God. And when you come out from amongst them, then you're coming into consecration because you're coming into, glory to God, my noble child. You're coming into, Lord have mercy, giving yourself to God. Mm -hmm. When you give yourself to God, you ain't just giving yourself to God. Everything about you is being given to God. How you talk, how you walk, how you think, how you live, how you operate, how you, amen, be a good steward over your money, a good steward over your time, a good steward over your family, a good steward on your job, a good steward in ministry, a good steward. Are you hearing me? Yeah, yeah baby woman. It's tight, but it's right. I talk about Come on here, mother. Amen. Yes. Amen. amen. And don't forget, this is encouraging everybody. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank I said, this Lord. is encouragement. Yes. Glory Thank to God. You. We keep running from people, and yet we still got all this stuff in Ew. us. Still thinking crazy, motives is bad, all that, because you ain't came out from amongst that. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Go to ex uh, uh, Exodus. Let's see how many how many minutes I have with you. Amen. Exodus. 
Go to Exodus 32, 29. Well, I got a little more minutes. Why? Because it did shut down and I had to start all over. So I got a little more minutes. Amen. Exodus 32. Amen. My scribes, I hope you on today. Amen. Amen. And come on the scribe for a sister. Exodus 32. Amen. Amen. So guess what? You got some work to do. Because okay. some stuff, how you was acting in the world, you done came and trying to act like that in the kingdom of God. And God said, not so. He's not taking all that stuff. Jesus. Come on, somebody. Come you want to be in the presence of God? God is a holy God. He's a righteous God. He's a just God. He's a faithful God. He's a loving God. And buckle your seatbelt. He will kill you, too. Oh, my God. You better come he on. He will kill mother. you, too. He gave Ooh. you life, and he'll take it from you. That's it. Come on, somebody. Yes. Go to Exodus 32. That's where I told y'all to go? Yes, 32. Go to verse 29. Go to verse 29. For Moses had said, consecrate yourselves today. To the Lord. You're consecrating to the Lord. You ain't consecrating to the Lord. You're not consecrating to the Lord for a house. You're not consecrating. Watch God. You're not consecrating to the Lord for a husband or a wife. That's not what consecration is about. Consecration is about you getting close to God. You making sure you, amen, in tune with God. You making sure your love for God is on point. You making sure you love God more than you love anything, anybody, or any place. You making sure that when God say go, you go and don't question. You making sure when God tell you to shut up, you'll shut up and don't question. You making sure that when God say glory to God, amen, to go or stop, you going to do it and don't even, amen, question him. Consecration is whatever you want, God. Here I am. My life don't no longer belongs to me. It belongs to you. I give you all of me. I don't give you my shout. I don't give you my praise. I don't give you my thank you only. I give you every part of me. Somebody that's a songwriter should have wrote them words down right there. That was good for a song right there. Amen. Amen. So consecration is not you consecrating because you're getting ready to get married. I'm going to get my husband, so I need to consecrate. That ain't what, No. That's not what consecration is for. Consecration is for you and God. And you and God coming into greater and closer intimacy. Are you hearing me? Yeah. That you can't live without him. You got to hear his voice every day, if not all day. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Oh my God, I love you. Yeah. Glory to God. Yes, Holy Ghost, I hear you. Because Jesus said it like this. My sheep know my voice. And a stranger voice, they will not follow. Come on here. And a stranger voice ain't always sometimes people on out of perimeter. A stranger voice is your voice. Because if it's not the voice of God, then it's considered a stranger voice. And if you're not talking like God is talking, then guess what? That's considered a stranger's voice. But my sheep, said the Lord Jesus Christ, knows my voice. <laughs> and a stranger's voice, they will not follow. Tell your neighbor, day two. Day two. Of consecration. Of consecration. So for Moses has said, consecrate yourself today to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Even every man upon his son and upon his brother. Everybody, all the family. That's what it's saying. That he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. This day. Nope, y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all scared to say hallelujah. You scared to tell the Lord thank you. He said he get ready to bestow a blessing upon you in day two. Day two, he's going to bestow it upon you. But how do I get it? I got to consecrate myself. Everybody around you, you should have already told your, 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 your girlfriends, your, 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 your friend men, all that. Listen, for seven days, you need to come and consecrate with me. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. How can two, two walk together except they be agreed? How can two, it ain't just talking about marriage. How can two come and walk together and talk together and you're not even on the same page? You don't even think of like, come on, you think, come on, you thinking, my God, Shonda. you thinking, yes, Lord, we can go big. And the other one thinking, mm, girl, I don't know about that. How can two walk together except they be agreed? You better check your circle out. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yes, Go to Ezekiel, precious one. Uh-huh. Yes, there's going to be a blessing bestowed upon you because today you are in consecration. Today God is going to bestow a blessing upon you, not because you want a car. It's because of consecration. Did y'all hear me? Yeah. Not because you got your little petition and your request, amen, on the side of you. He's not answering the petition and the request. He's answering the consecration. Ooh, that's a good thing. He's answering the consecration. 
Is anybody listening? Did everybody yes. go home? Yes. He's not answering the petition and the request that you have. He didn't put that on hold for a second, but he's answering the consecration. And he said, because you're in day two, today I'm going to, I'm going to bestow a blessing upon you because of consecration. Not because what you got on your petition. Not because what you've been crying about. Get it right. Don't get it twisted. Yes. I said get it right and don't get it twisted. Because you don't go into consecration asking God you for a house. It. You don't go you in right. consecration and asking God. God said, uh, what? Oh, come on, come on. You came to me in consecration for something else? I thought you was coming to me in consecration for me. That's it. Amen. That's it right there. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, can we do a snap? Don't get, don't, don't get it twisted. Consecration is not has nothing to do with do list. with you, you whatever it is here. you want in the physical. That's it. It's all about what's happening in the spirit of you and God. Are you hearing me? He said, because of your consecration today, I'm a bestow a blessing upon you. Are you hearing me? Yeah. And for that reason, tell your neighbor, yield yourself and receive it. Because Ooh, yeah. whatever yeah. it is, yeah. it's still going to yeah. be good. Yeah. If he's going to yeah. bestow a blessing yeah. on your mind and call you to have a good memory, yeah. it's still going to be good. Yeah. So whatever he I chose, know. it's yeah. still going to be good. Oh, no, baby, he's going to ask. He's going to answer the petition and the request. But we got that on hold because we don't want that stuff to be our God. We want God to be our God. Are you hearing me? Yes. So God be our God. He's going to always take care of us. Are you hearing me? Because I'm telling you something. There's a scripture in the word. I got to ask you more time because it froze up and, and, you know, all that good stuff. Do you not know that the people wanted their stuff more than they wanted God? And God said, all right, you can have it, you know. And then when you come into trouble, ask it to get you out. Mm -hmm. When you come into a place that you, you need a maneuvering in, or you need to, to, to do something? He said, ask it. That's your God because you want that more than you want me, said the Lord. And I'm going to give it to you. And that's your God. And you better ask it. And remember, it don't talk. <laughs> And remember, it can't reproduce of itself. <laughs> Glory to God. Because you didn't get that from you. You got it from me. That's right. a whole different teaching right, right there. Right. Glory to God. Because you can go out here and, 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 and make, make your them. way. You but it's going to take you forever and a day with 50 grays of hair on your head. But when God gives you something and then it goes wrong in the earth, you go back to the one, amen, that produced it. You can't go back to that car. That car ain't produced that. Y'all better come on here. You're going to have to work years to get a car and pay it in full. Who am I talking to right on, there? Father. You better know who you're serving and who you're supposed to fall in love with. Uh huh. That's what consecration is all about, beloved. He said today, because of your consecration, I'm going to bestow a blessing upon you. I told y'all to go to Ezekiel. Yes. You know, it was just in me. I just had to keep on because that's some good stuff right there. Go to Ezekiel 43. Ezekiel 43. Are y'all okay out there? Oh, yes. Are you okay? Are you okay? Facebook Live all around the world. Ezekiel 43. Ezekiel 43 and round about 26. Are y'all there? Yes. Ezekiel 43 and 26 and 27. Whoever's my scribes, write it down. Ezekiel 43, 26 and 27, the Bible decrees the word of God to be so. Watch this. Somebody get ready to get happy because I done got happy. Seven days shall they purge the altar and purify it. And they shall consecrate themselves. This is Ezekiel 43, 26 and 27. Seven days. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor we on point. On Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor we on time. On time. Seven days shall they purge. Purge means to clean. Are you hearing me? The altar and purify it. That, to, that, that means to make sure, glory to God, that your heart and your motives, because the altar is your heart. Come on, my there's an altar at the church building, but there's an altar in your heart. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. And so he said for seven days, they have to do what? Purge, purge and purify it. What is it? The altar. My God from Zion. Uh-huh. Glory to God. Then it says, and they shall consecrate themselves. So what am I saying? It tells you consecration, glory to God, is dealing with a purging. Yes. 
and is purging the altar. That the heart will be right towards God. That the heart, the motives will be right towards the will of God. The things of God. The assignment of God. Watch this. The love of God. Watch God. And the people of God. Yes. All right? Yes. I, I, I didn't say, um, Go ahead, Mark. I didn't say the children of God. <laughs> I said the people of God. Well, that's the people that say, hold on, hold on, hold on. Jesus said it like this. I have people that are not in the fold yet, but they belong to me. Okay. So they're the people of God, but they're not the children of God. That's he said, I have people that is not in the fold yet, but they are a part of. So that there's a difference to be a people of God than the children of God. Are you hearing me? And so we, the people of God, need to purge the altar and purify the altar so we can stay the children of God. All right now. Are y'all hearing me? Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. Because see, right now, because not only have you given your life to Christ, you've given your whole entire being to Christ, and you have become a child of Christ. Are you hearing me? So for yeah. that reason, there are people of God that's out there doing stuff they ain't got no business doing, but yet they already counted to be in the fold. That's it. Ooh, that's why you can't sit there and, and judge and act like everybody going to hell because you don't know they may beat you to heaven. Okay. Are you hearing me? Yes. Because it is God that chooses. It is God that appoints. Oh, yeah. Buckle your seatbelt right here. And it's God that calls. Because many are called. Are called but few. Okay. All right. Are you hearing me? So this is about you, me, and God. Are you hearing me? He says, he says, verse 27. And when these days are expired. Somebody getting ready to shout. And when these seven days are over, it shall be that upon the eighth day and so forward from the eighth day on, the priest shall make your burnt offerings upon the altar and your peace offerings. And I, the Lord, will accept you, said the Lord. He said, when the seven days is up, after you purge and purify the altar, after you purge and purify your heart, your mind, your spirit, your soul, your motives. He yeah. said, after that, yeah. I'm going to have the priest to mother. accept the burnt offering. Ahead, You're the burnt offering. Oh, oh, oh. Burn it up, God, whatever's in me that is not hey, like you. Burn it up. That. If my mind is thinking wrong, hey, burn that up. Are you here from after the seventh day to the eighth day and forward? The Lord said, tell them I will accept them. In other words, God said, tell them I will not ignore them. This consecration in your life at this time. Ayaboshanda. God said, tell them after these seven days is fulfilled. Ayaboshaya. And I've already told them what it is about of a consecration with me, said the Lord. Now they know what is going to happen. You don't walk in the eight day acting like you all that. You walk in humility. You don't walk with a big head. You walk in love. Why? <laughs> because it was the Lord that chose. Are you hearing me? Somebody say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Go to Jude. Jude is right before Revelation. Jude 1 and 1 is right before Revelation. Jude Jude 1 and 1. <laughs> Cape man ran up out of here. How are you? So Jesus. Jude 1 and 1. Jude 1 and 1. The Bible says Jude. Jude is talking to Jude. I want you to put your name there. Okay. Vanessa, okay. the servant of Jesus Christ, and the brother or and brother of James. To them that are sanctified by God. So he's talking to Jude. He's talking to Jude brothers. And he's talking to those that is consecrated. Because sanctified means cons being consecrated. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Okay. Sanctified by God the Father. And preserved in Jesus Christ and called. So he said there's going to be a preserving in Jesus Christ. Those that have been called. Those that have been sanctified, how about side, is going to be preserved. 
What does that word preserve mean? To maintain in its original state. Which means you're not going to change. You're going to have the right mindset. Your heart and your motives and your life is going to be right. You're preserved in Jesus Christ. And called. Are you hearing me? So the word in that scripture is preserved. You're going to maintain in the original state that you and I were supposed to be before the foundation of this world, before we even supposed to came in. Because we were born in sin and shape and iniquity. Are you hearing me? But God called us through his son Jesus, and we got saved. And then he began to lead us through purging and purify. Are you hearing me? So now he said, I'm going to preserve you. The, 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 the state that you were supposed to be in all the way through this, you're going to be preserved. Uh huh. See, that's why you can hold fast to that. That's why when the enemy try to come in and try to make you do something that you're not supposed to, you got to rebuke him. Glory to God. And then you got to maintain. Yeah. Any women that's out there, you listening to me, you got to maintain. Yeah. You got to maintain that piece of hair. Yes. You got to maintain. You can't just slap it on your head and say, "This is my wig." No. Come on, you got to maintain it. You got to you got to either brush it with your hands with some you oil on it. You got to do the sheen. You got to maintain the new look. You got to maintain the fresh look. Are you hearing me? And so the Lord said, in Christ, you will be maintained in the original state, the state of being, the state of mind of Christ. Are you hearing me? Go to John chapter 17. This is all with consecration. John chapter 17. John chapter 17. And we close and we go and we closing you all. John chapter 17, because guess what? This is encouragement. John chapter 17 and verse 17 says it like this. Sanctify them through thy truth. Mm -hmm. So how does one get consecrated or sanctified, which means to be separated? We are sanctified through the truth. The word of God, the word of God is truth. So when you and I get in the word, stay in the word, then we're being sanctified in the word of truth. It says, for thy word is truth. So you got to connect prayer. You got to connect studying of your word during the time of consecration. You cannot go through the day. That's why I say we're consecrating all day. That means when I say you're consecrating all day, I'm telling you, glory to God, that your mind need to stay on the word, that you need to be in the word all day. I mean, yes, if you got to drive, you got to drive. If you got to go to the grocery store, you go to the grocery store. You got, and all that time that you got to do something else, your mind ain't driving. <laughs> Come on, it's your hands driving. Your mind ain't walking through, glory to God, the grocery store. Your hand is pushing a cart with your feet. So, therefore, your mind can stay on the word of God. You're to meditate on the word of God. And when you can get to your Bible, you get to your Bible because you're sanctified. Are you hearing me? You're separated by the word. You can't sit there talking about something, yeah, yeah, all day and you consecrate. You got to get in the word. You got to have a prayer life. You got to purge the altar, sanctify the altar. Are you hearing me? Come on. And then it's telling you, in order for consecration, second day, glory to God. The word, the word of God is going to sanctify you. So therefore, you're going to need the word. And while all of us got these technologies called these phones, there's words. You should have a Bible on your phone. Yeah. So whether you can't get to your, your, your main Bible, you got a Bible on your phone. So therefore, ask the Holy Ghost to lead you to a scripture. Because why? You're in consecration. And the word is going to do what? Sanctify you. And the word is truth and it's like water. And it's going to cleanse you as well. So your thoughts will be changed. Is anybody listening there? Everybody go home. Go to Numbers chapter 6. Tell your neighbor, she just encouraging us. She just encouraging us. Tell them, no, not this. Not this. She's in. in. She's encouraging us. Encouraging us. You got to make sure you say it right. Oh, I'm encouraging you and saying you can do this. That you could go all the way through. That we're not just picking up doing something. Amen. Because it, it, it yes, Lord. Because it's familiar with everybody now. <laughs> yeah, everybody doing it. But everybody don't understand what they're doing. Right. 
Those are people out there that understand what they're doing. They understand. They understand consecration, what it means and what I'm supposed to do and what I'm supposed to give up. So therefore I can be and stay close to God. But there's other people out there doing it because they hear it, but they have no understanding. Y'all know I'm in scripture. They got ears, but they can't hear. They got eyes, but they can't see. Got it? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Tell your neighbor, I thank God. He's given me revelation. He's given me, revelation. He's given me, understanding, He's given me understanding about consecration. About consecration. Because, because when he calls me in calls to his in. personal chamber, his personal then, chamber. I then I understand what all has to be done, to be done. while I'm standing in the presence of God's face. Of God's face. Numbers chapter 6. Amen. Numbers chapter 6, beloved. And go to verse 5. The Bible decrees the word of God to be so all the days of the vow of his separation. So can mm -hmm. I help y'all with something? Because I pause break right there. When you said yes to the Lord of this consecration, you went into a vow. You got to keep your vow. Come on, mother. Are you hearing me? Yes. You, when, when God is saying to you, it is a vow of separation, which means it's a vow of consecration. I'm going to show you something. And all the days of the vow of his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head. <laughs> Woo, glory until the days be fulfilled uh-huh in the in the which he separated himself unto the lord mm -hmm. did you see that yes, so therefore the consecration is not said oh i'm in today i'm out this ain't no double dutch right mm -hmm. this ain't no double dutch right. glory to god the consecration is a vow you're making a vow unto the lord of separation you're making a vow unto the lord of consecration are you hearing me? Yeah. And then it tells you, you cannot shave your head. Hold on. The Lord, uh, it says, unto the Lord. So we're doing it unto the Lord. He shall be holy. He shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow. All the days that he separated himself unto the Lord, he shall come at no dead body. Which means you doing this consecration, you can't touch nothing dead. You can't interact with dead stuff and dead people and dead thoughts and, and dead situations and dead. You understand? Because there's a lot of stuff because he told us yesterday that we should not go back. We need to get, we need to, we need to cast those stuff off from yesterday because right. yesterday is what? Dead. Mm -hmm. Whatever hurt you is dead. dead. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. Them old thoughts are dead. And in the consecration, he said, you can't touch nothing dead. Oh. Go to verse 7. He shall not make himself unclean. Did you see that? So now God is saying you should not make yourself unclean. What you think the enemy going to try to do? Because he know what comes with consecration. So he's trying his hardest to make sure you touch something unclean. Your thoughts. Come on. What you want and how you want it. The enemy is not working overtime. He ain't got to work overtime to try to make us get off course. Because when you and God, he said, I can't fool with them. Because did he not tell the Lord, you got a hedge around Job. I can't mess with him. So surely the enemy could not be working overtime. Because if you and God, baby, he can't touch you. That's why the Lord said, have you not considered? <laughs> he said, well, uh, Job, Job, I can't even touch him. I can't even get to him because you got him surrounded. So he ain't working overtime for those that's in God. He ain't even working overtime for those that's outside of God. He ain't working overtime. Is anybody listening? Everybody go home. So it says, he shall not make himself unclean for his father. Don't lie for them. For his mother. Don't lie for her. For his brother. Hello, sisters and brothers. Amen, or for his sister. When they die. When they out there doing crazy stuff. Come on here. Watch this, because the consecration of his God is upon his head. Oh, my Shonda. Woo! Because the consecration of your God is upon your head, which means it's upon your mind. You can't get involved with that. How you going to get involved with stuff and you in consecration? That's why you got to separate yourself from the, your old thoughts and from people. You can't be on the phone talking to everybody you on consecration. You got to mm. shut stuff down. Yes, you talking like you was talking when you wasn't on consecration? Something wrong. Right, right, right. Something wrong. Come on here. Come on. Something's wrong. Here goes scripture. You got a problem? Take it up with God. He said, glory to God, that you, you, you dead works, that dead works. 
everything they do in her. Yes, Lord, how about you? For the wages of sin is what? Death. Is what? Death. The wages of sin is what? Death. Okay, so if the wages of sin is death, the wages, the payment of sin, the payment of the act is death. Then we've been walking around dead right. when we was a sinner. Mm -hmm. So if our family members are not in God, then they are considered dead. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't care how nice you think they are. They're still dead in the eyesight of God. <laughs> and you in consecration? <laughs> and you sitting here? And you got to talk to everybody in your family? <laughs> no, no, no. When you in consecration, baby, you got to shut everybody off. Because you can't. It's scripture. It said you can't touch nothing dead. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Tell them that Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost said, don't be trying to be slick and text nobody back. Come on, mother. Because now we can text people back without talking to verbally. Mm -hmm. And God said, don't try to play him. Because you're in consecration. Are you hearing me? You're in consecration. God has called you and you made a vow. And you got to keep your vow. There it is. You got to pay your vow. Yes. Tell your neighbor, you got to pay your vow. You got to pay your vow. With all that's in you, you got to finish the course. Everything that's in you gonna have to finish and see this thing out. Are you hearing me? Yes. Go to Judges. Go to Judges. Two more scriptures and we are done, pay people of God. Judges, uh, chapter thirteen. Tell your neighbor she's encouraging us. She's encouraging us. She's supporting us. She's helping us. Us. We need to understand where we're going, precious. Do you not know God is today, the second day he's bestowing a blessing upon you? It's a blessing, yes, Lord, of his choice. Uh, not of what you got on your petition. Not of what you got on your request. It's of his choice because of this consecration. Amen? Mm -hmm. Judges chapter 13. Mm -hmm. And I heard them say in the old days, anyway, you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? And that's the response you should be having. Anyway, you bless me, Lord. I should be satisfied. Not Lord. God, but what's what about my what about my request? No, God, anyway, you bless me. I'll be satisfied. Judges chapter 13 is what we're going to be loved. Judges 13 and verse 5. Ready? Uh-huh. Here on. it is. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son. A circle that word son. And no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God. Mm. Tell your neighbor, I am a Nazarite, I am a Nazarite. Unto, God. unto God. I'll give you understanding after I finish this. And he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Are y'all hearing me? Yes. Are you, are you listening? Yes. There is certain things you can and cannot do when you are a Nazarite. You can't be with everybody. You can't go everywhere. And sometimes we, we, we don't understand. Well, why I can't and why and what? And if, that ain't God. Hold it. Because if he chose you to be a Nazarite, <laughs> there's just some stuff you can't do. Right. Come on. He said, first of all, what, what he cannot do, he can't shave his head. Mm -hmm. What was over here, over in numbers, we were just talking about. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? Yes. That was a vow. And it talked about shaving the head, right? Right. A razor, right? Right. Then what was it talking about? It was talking about being the Nazarite. Mm -hmm. So for seven days, are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. If you wasn't chosen from the womb of coming forth of being a Nazarite from the womb, then when you go into consecration for seven days or however many days, glory to God, then you are considered a Nazarite. Mm -hmm. And there's things you cannot do when you consecrate. There's things you cannot, amen, say. That's why things, glory to God, that's in your spirit, things that's in your mind that is not of God, and God reveals to you that this is a part of you, and you can't stay in my presence with this. You've got to get rid of it. Are you hearing me? So here, y'all, is this too tough for y'all? Because uh -uh. y'all ain't saying amen. It must be too tough. The meat must be too tough. Uh -uh. Glory to God. Because uh -uh. Vanessa Jackson, I didn't say apostle, Vanessa Jackson is a Nazarite yes. unto God. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. So go ahead and go over here to uh, uh, chapter 16. Everybody know the, the, the book of uh, the story of uh, Samson? This is the book of Samson, uh, the, the story of Samson. Chapter 16 and verse 7. And Samson said unto her, who was her? Delilah. Delilah was an unclean spirit. Delilah kept on provoking him. She wanted to know where his strip lie. Right. Do you not know people are out there, glory to God, themselves and the enemy want to know where your strip lies? Woo. Come on. 
Glory to God. So she kept provoking him. She kept coming, if you love me, then you will let me know where your strength lies. Where you get all this strength from? Glory to God. The Spirit of the Lord, it comes upon him, and then he comes becomes another man. Well, she wanted to know what happened, and he kept on playing. He kept playing with her. He should have been playing with her because he played too much, and then he fell into her hands. Come on, mother. Watch this. What did I tell you to go? Verse 5. Watch okay. this. Huh? Seven? seven. And seven. If they bind me with seven green uh, uh, whiffs that were never dried, then shall I be weak. Come on. Mm -hmm. Go on down to verse 10. And Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me and told me lies, and now tell me, I pray thee. I need you to tell me what's going on. I need you to tell me what's going on. Go to verse 17. He told her all his heart. He told her all his heart, and said, There had not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. Now, some of us have not been chosen as a Nazarite from our mother's womb, right. but because we were reborn, regenerated mm -hmm. in Christ, we came out of the matrix. It's called womb. Mm -hmm. And when you came out of the womb of Christ, you became a Nazareth. He said, that's where my strength is. If I have been shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. So consecration is letting you know that God is saying that we have to make sure that we are purging the altar and purify the altar, which is our hearts, our motives, our minds, because you are Nazarite. You cannot do things that God has told you not to do. Are you hearing me? Yeah. So he ended up telling her how and where his strength lies and how it became the way it became. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, as we begin to close this out, Second Samuel. Chapter 6 and verse 8, 11 through 17. Do you not know you're a Nazarite? Do you not know you made a vow these seven days? Do you not know God is putting a blessing upon you because of what you've done? Do you not know? Do you not know that God has strengthened you? Do you not know that when you obey, obey God, you come into a different, amen, power, power of the Holy Ghost? After that, the Holy Ghost come upon you, you shall be endured with power. Are you hearing me? So as we begin to close this out, understand David. David got upset. He got upset. This is this is this is Second Samuel chapter six, verse eight, eleven through seventeen. You we can read it. Watch this. David got upset with God because David's servant touched the ox wrong, and and God had to cause a breach to come into. He began to cause a breach. Glory to God. Tell him just look. I don't know. Just tell him to start looking around. I don't know. Look in the garage. I don't know. Glory to God. Amen. Just start the masters here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So he says he got upset with God because God caused a breach to happen because the servant touched the ark, tried to touch the presence of God. And God, see, that's why you can't touch the presence of God and be unclean. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people saying the presence of God is with you or is with me and be unclean. You got that wrong. God ain't sitting on no dirty, mm -hmm. dirty person. He's not sitting on a dirty vessel. He's not sitting on a dirty mind. He's not sitting on a dirty heart. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. And so, glory to God, the breach, out of Osanda, glory to God, the breach happened and David got mad. When David got mad, glory to God, by Shonda, watch this. David was displeased, and he went his own way. Now, David was chosen after the heart of God. But David got upset with God because a servant touched God wrong. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? Yeah. So David walks away. When David walks away, glory to God, instead of him having the ark in front of him, which is the presence of the Lord in front of him, he was taking it to the side. And he took it to over Edom's house and dropped it off because he was upset with God. He was upset with the president because I cannot believe, God, that you would do that. He didn't know nothing about that. God, I believe that you should have told him before. That's how we act. You should have told him before. Come on. Mm -hmm. No, David, you should have told him about my presence. Mm. 
And though my presence is with you, you should have told them about my presence. When you're consecrating, you're consecrating about the presence of God, that you stay in his presence. And God ain't following you, watch this, and God ain't on the side of you. God is supposed to be in front of you. So the Bible said he takes, amen, the Ark of, Ark of the Covenant and he puts it to the side and he's walking with it. Because he mad at God. Mm -hmm. And he drops it off at over Edom. Do you think God going to stop being God because we mad? Okay. <laughs> Do you think God going to stop being God because we frustrated, we upset because things didn't go our way? No. For the three month spans, over Edom's whole house was being blessed. Over Edom and his household. That's what it said. For three months. Glory to God. For three months, David was missing out wow. of what was supposed to be his because he was mad. Mm -hmm. Because he was upset. Three months. You think God finna bow down to us? He ain't bowing down to us. Mm -hmm. He's not lowering his standards because of us. God That's why God, God, hallelujah. That's why God said, listen, there's a standard in me. Consecration keeps you in that standard with God. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. We're about to close. I'm encouraging you. God ain't coming down to us, into our stuff. We got to, don't watch this. Though we go through situations, though we go through problems, we're to, in the spirit, we're to go above it. Mm -hmm. And then God will come and meet us. We're not to stay in it and say, oh, 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 oh. No, look at God, you say it. And then it brings you above the situation, even if the situation is still there. Mm -hmm. And then God comes to where, it's, where you at. Because the word brought you to a measurement of him. Mm -hmm. But he ain't coming down. He ain't changing because, oh, I'm his favorite. I, I believe I'm his favorite. I believe I'm God's favorite, but God ain't coming down. Amen. Right. He's not changing. He's not lowering his standards right. because I feel I'm his favorite. Right. So David was what was chosen from the heart of God. God wasn't changing because it was David and God wasn't changing because it was David's servant. And so David got mad and dropped it off for three months over Edom and his household was being blessed. Do you not know what consecration get ready to do for you? Do you not know you consecrating with me because God has called it? Is getting ready to do for you. The Bible said that a messenger went to David and then we done. And said, David, do you not know over Edom is getting blessed? Because of the presence of God, the ark of God? David said, what you say, paraphrase? Okay. What? <laughs> I thought I was God's man. Mm -hmm. Watch this, Bucky and Seba. I thought God was going to come looking for me. See? Oh. <laughs> that was my bubble. Mm -mm. God ain't going to come look for you and you walked away from him. But when you turn around and come back, guess what? He's still right there where you where right. you walked away from right. him. Right. He ain't finna come running for you. Come on, somebody. David said, what you say? Mm -hmm. The Bible said David got himself together. You want to know why? Because David couldn't just go to God like they used to be. David had to consecrate himself because David had the wrong attitude. So now he got stuff filtered in his altar, in his heart, in his mind. Are you hearing me? He just couldn't run up to God. Hey, God, I'm back. Oh, my God, you know I love you, Lord. Oh, my God, you know uh, I'm a worshiper. He couldn't go to God like that. The Lord had to give him consecration. He had to conse consecrate himself. Are you hearing me? You can't just run back to the Lord. Yeah, you can repent, but after you repent, you need a consecration. Amen. And so David was consecrating himself. He was making sure that his heart was right, his motives was right, his mind was right, because he was he was he was drawn back closer to God. And the Bible makes it plain that every six, every six spaces, which we call it every six steps, he will begin to praise God. Every six steps, he will praise God. Why? He was consecrating himself. He wanted to make sure the presence of God was still with him. He wanted to make sure that him and God was, still had a relationship. Mm -hmm. They still had love for one another. He wanted to make sure. Do you want to make sure? That's what this consecration is all about. To make sure as we leave out these five months, we still have a love for God. The things of God. That we've given up everything for to be with God. Are you hearing me? Yes. Seven days of consecration. This is the second day. And he took the day and then he divided. He said, tell him I'm dividing. I'm bringing balance. Hear the baby. I'm bringing balance. I'm doing, God said, I'm doing what I purpose for your life. And as you and me keep going to God, keep loving God, 
keep wanting God more than we want anything or anybody. Allowing God to be our happiness. Allowing God to be our joy. God, I want to hear you. I don't want to just hear you say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I want to hear your voice. I don't know about you, but it don't feel good when you can't hear the voice of God no more. It don't feel good when you don't feel his presence no more. People are getting up singing, preaching, and watch this, and prophesy, and don't realize it's just a gift until the oil comes on. And God ain't even there. Be encouraged, beloved. This is the second day. And God is going to do some awesome things as we begin to come up to the seventh day. Because remember, everybody has to make sure they let me know they're on here because I'm going to lay my hands in the rim of the Spirit that this consecration be accepted and God do a great thing. The cloud is going to come down. And the cloud is going to come over you, the tent, the tabernacle. Be encouraged. Stay focused. Do the consecration all day. I already explained to you, what do I mean by being consecrated all day? This is a vow of separation. You got to pay your vow. Well, Pastor, but I meant get up, repent, pay your vow. Finish this. See what the end is going to be. Are you hearing me? I love everybody. You be encouraged. Know that the Lord is with you. Know that the Lord is calling you. The power of God is with you. He's doing greater things with you. But God don't want you to want the blessings and stuff and things more than you want to spend time with him. More than you want to hear his voice. More than you want to please him. You want to please everybody else. But you don't really want to please God. And the only time you want to please him when you're at church and you're lifting your hand. So you be encouraged. I love everybody. I'm speaking to everybody around the world. That this is the second day of the consecration. You go with God, and you know God will go with you. Until tomorrow at 8 a.m. California time, I'll see you. Stay in prayer. Stay in your word. Don't forget 6 p.m., a healthy meal. Don't forget, if you are pregnant and you are medicine, acknowledge the Lord, acknowledge your doctor. Because during the day, water and real juice, not preserving all this stuff mixed up with it. And watch what God do with you, for you, in you, with him after this consecration. There was testimonies on yesterday. I'm believing that there are going to be testimonies on today. Because this consecration was not called by man. This consecration was called by God. Until next time, I'll see you tomorrow at 8 a.m. God bless you. Mm -hmm.